Good evening and w Good evening and welcome folks. Should be a good one tonight. Third league of the Bundesliga, German football of course. And it's a tale of, well, two sides of the coin so to speak. Both of these teams coming from a similar situation to be placed at opposite ends of the table. So what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, it's Magdeburg, FC Magdeburg against MSV Duisburg tonight. Magdeburg sit at the top of the table currently. 48 points in 22 matches played, 15 victories for them with three coming in the last five games, along with two draws. Their opponents, Duisburg, coming off two consecutive losses. Three in their last five with a draw and a victory sprinkled in between. Leaves them in 18th currently with 20 points through this, their 22nd match. And when I said they come from similar spots, that's because both of these sides were in the second division, the second Bundesliga, back in 2018 and 2019, that season. But they were both relegated that year, back down to this third division. And one of them at the moment, Magdeburg that is, are certainly looking to make a case to get themselves back up into the top flight, or the, the second flight, I should say. In terms of head-to-head -head stuff in the recent history. Magdeburg have had the upper hand in the past two, both coming within the last calendar year. The 21st of August was the last meeting. That was a 2-1 to one victory for Magdeburg. And 3-2 to two prior to that, that was in May. So in the previous season. And two previous 2-1 two to one victories for them prior to that. So, four in a row, looking to make it five. As Duisburg last tasted victory against this side in March of 2020. So coming up on almost two years ago. Can definitely expect some goals in this one. Solid delivery. Didn't fall for him in an area where he could actually direct it towards goal, but target was good. De Borg back out in the, well at the moment looks more like a 1-4-1-4. One, four, one, four. Could argue it'd be a 4-5-1 at times. with uh, Muller number 16 with possession there making his way up behind Conte the lone striker and so Magdeburg yeah, they haven't lost in their last eight which is no easy feat and they've come away with the lead by halftime in seven of those last games, or last eight games, rather. And I said we should see some goals. That's because they've scored at least once in 20 of their last 21. But they aren't infallible defensively. Although that has been an area of their game which they've taken great pride in. They aren't quite the best defensive team in the league. That will go to FCK. 
team behind them in the standings. Nine points clear, however. They've only allowed 13. Magdeburg with 21 allowed. But couple that with their league leading 45 goals for. Get to see why they've only lost four games out of the 23. Drew in four, and then of course 15 wins. Next closest is to a couple sides with 11. Now, Duisburg have managed to put it in the net at home in their last 20 of their 22 games. So practically every game so far this season that they've uh, played at home. But as I mentioned, Magdeburg Duisburg like to give it up in the first half. Conceded at least one time in their last five of six. And to make matters worse, they've also allowed second half goals as well. Not quite at, at five out of six ratio, but in their last three home games, they have conceded in both halves. Magdeburg in their own end. Trying to get out. Almost swinging free. We'll get a whistle here. Captain Tobias Muller there. Getting a bit aggressive on trying to gain possession for himself and position. Last man back as well. Went up a bit high with the forearm there. Chance for Magdeburg to get into this game perhaps, but it's short-lived. Or for uh, Duisburg rather, to try and get into this. Should definitely see a overall possession advantage in this one. Would be shocked if it was anything less than about 50-60% in favor of the side attacking at the moment. Magdeburg. Bordeaux almost got away with it. Tried to thread that forward for Yeboah. Stoffelkamp beaten. Hello. Lubomaya on the wing. See if he decides to go out wide or just look for the delivery. Little overlap, overlap rather. Wonderful build up so far. Shot does not get through. In a fortunate manner, that is. Worked into a wonderful, wonderful area there. It's Conde doing what he could. And yeah, you could make a case for some kind of infraction, but referee deciding that's not good enough. Jump. Yep, well, some space, but ends up going backwards a bit. Finds Quadro. He's depossessed rather nicely as well. Obamaya. Now Conde. 
Has Obermeyer in support. Decides to go it alone. Flicks it on. Obermeyer in the middle, and we've got number one. Ito gets the finish, but the buildup was where it was all at in that particular sequence of events. Wonderful start. Ten minute, tenth minute in. thought he would go at it alone but he found Obermeyer wonderfully and then that follow-up pass is simply routine the finish they picked out a spot well really about the only area of the cage he could have really aimed for defenders and keeper closing in wonderfully worked and Ito gets the opener 1-0 That is Ito Tatsuya's first goal for Magdeburg. Twenty-four-year-old Japanese midfielder making an instant impact practically. There's one of those goals in the first half I was talking about. And this is exactly where they're the most dangerous, that's Magdeburg at least. It's within the first 15 minutes. That's when they tend to strike, get off to an early start, play some possession football, and continue to generate chances, and force Duisburg and their opponents in general to come at them, open themselves up. showing the quality needed to get back up into the second division. As we continue to march on, and here we go. Conte, all alone, but does have support. Play on. Possession won cleanly. Boadouz now. Can't find the follow-up. Things will calm down for just a moment here. Atik. Konde. Boga. Of course, two Mullers on the team. And Tobias Muller, the captain. On the defensive side of things. And then Andreas Muller, midfielder. Jesmola has uh, played in every single game, actually, so far in this campaign. He's added two goals. But it's Aris Atek in midfield that we've got to watch out for. It's already broken into double digits. He's got 10 on the season. And along with Luca Schula providing 20 of those 45 goals.
Wolfsburg looking to make some threatening moves here. Opportunity to equal it up and it's popped up into the air but still in a dangerous area. Bordeaux can't win the ball but he does earn his side a throw. Like the ball caught a bit back at the moment. Trying to get back to playing their game. Playing the ball starts off that sequence of events. Locked there, clear infraction of the rules and regulations, and Cole will get a talking to as well. Not sure if he'll get a card for his troubles. Probably not. But he really didn't have much of a choice there. Tobias Muller. Back to Reimer. First time I've said the keeper's name so far tonight. On the other side of things, Weinkauf. The opposite number. I haven't said his name either. That's because the first action he saw ended up in the back of his net. 15 minutes gone. The statistics say that Mike de Burg shouldn't score again in this half, but you never quite know. They do say they'll score in the second, though. Far wing this time. Delivery a bit off, no height, and straight at the defense as well, but first corner upcoming. I take to take it. Side to play short. Muller. Andreas Muller, that is. Lofted into the box and. Only defender is able to reach it with their heads. As Obermeyer will collect on the back end. And send it back to Raiman, who's made his way up. Long ball from Obermeyer. Hopeful, perhaps. But a poor touch there. Let's Conte take control here. Wins it for his side. Can they hold on? Tough in that scenario. Doing well to disrupt the transition of play regardless. Not too pleased with that whistle, but nothing you can do about it. Knoll to send this one down pitch. Raman couldn't quite reach it. Obermeyer's there in support. Didn't look like he was. The keeper was completely sure as to what he wanted to do. Turned over in a poor area as well. Ito. Ito on the left foot. Will he take it? Not this time. Boxed out well. But a solid run to generate the threat. Beautiful ball the other way. Bordeaux towards the middle, and that one is just out of the reach of Ademi. But still in play, still in a dangerous area. Frey. It looked like Bordeaux was offside there regardless if he had gotten a little bit of a clip on it. Ball in was decent enough. It still could have been a bit closer towards Ademi.
but looking good there from Disberg. Still plenty of time to go, something to build upon. Maybe that's where they're going to have to pay, uh, put their hopes and and their opportunities is in the counter, but they can't get opened up like this. A wonderful fake. Ball in towards the middle, looking towards Conte, but defender's foot was a bit quicker this time. Just a simple clearance. Pressure is still on. Conte. Andreas Muller. for Ito to spring across open up on the back line wonderful ball in keeper did well to get off his line quickly and his content was right there and something perhaps for the home side to cheer about Boadus in the box still chance for a shot but numbers come back numbers do the job Octopur defending well They do open themselves up to that quick long ball, but recovering well so far. The two opportunities that have presented themselves. Ito, plenty of space. Three on three. Ito, a chance to put it away, perhaps. Denied on the doorstep, Mein Kauf. Take. Good idea. Just needed to put a little more on that pass and could have ended up in something quite dangerous. Another look at the Ito opportunity. Onside as well. Just a great stop from Weinkauf. Twenty-second minute of play, and Magdeburg looked like they're determined to find that second goal, which would be absolutely massive. I mentioned that Magdeburg liked to score goals, leading the way in the third league. Duisburg, they've been. Decent enough in the scoring category, putting through 27, but they've allowed 38. Minus 11 in that category. Big reason why they're in the bottom three of the league and facing a potential tough end to the season. And these two teams were relegated together and oh what a poor poor move from Weinkauf and he may be ejected indeed he is last man back came out to make an impossible play don't see that every day Leo Weinkauf he's out of here and there was nothing else the referee could have done. I mean, he turned it over, pulled him down. And yeah, do you let the second one in or do you get tossed? Granted, that's why you do have backup keepers, of course, but that's just Un and inexcusable. Well, this will change the nature of this matchup even further. It looked certainly, at least from my spot here, that uh, Magdeburg are clearly in charge of this game. They look like they're going to 
put up another goal or two perhaps at least that's my prediction and just from the general feel and flow of the game here and now a man down backup keeper in now don't get it wrong all of these guys come ready to play just a matter of putting on some of the final bits of apparel That is a that is a shocking, shocking turn of events. Didn't expect to see the backup keeper tonight, that's for sure. Speaking of the backup keeper, Leo Weinkauf has been suited up for every single game so far. 22 appearances. And keepers don't very often get a night off. And Jo Koppens will Take his spot today. 31 year old Belgian. Coppins' is, uh, first game for this club. Arrived here in July. Seeing as he hasn't played any games this season, I have to look back to last year. And last year he was not with this club, of course, as he joined in the summer. Played for Sportpark Unterhachnik. Made 17 appearances. And conceded 27 goals in the process. With two clean sheets, actually. And making his first, or making his debut here in the third division of the German Bundesliga. Let's see how he deals with the situation that he's been put in. And granted, not one that I'd want to be in. Free kick the first thing in. Tantalizingly close to being number two there. As Atik gave it his all. Some power behind it. And, uh, actually, it was a little further off than looked from this angle. Got to think that Weinkauf for the next time that situation comes up. I think he lets it go in rather than get himself kicked out. Now he misses the next match. Coppens will get himself another start. His first full appearance. First he's got to get through the next 60 plus minutes. I fully expect Magdeburg to do more of the same, but now with a bit more control to it, since they've got that extra space afforded to them by having the man advantage. Hey, hey, hey. 
Now creating that space will be easier and even more important. You find one mismatch in terms of speed or a little bit of positioning and it's off to the races for number two. Like we saw with Ito. Now take Andreas Muller back to Tobias Muller. Obermeyer. And granted, there's still opportunities for Magdeburg to get, or for Duisburg rather, to get back into this. We just saw one right there. That bounce is a little more fortunate. Could be looking at a two on one the other way. Ito. All kinds of space. What's he going to do? Back towards the middle. Shot is shanked and finally cleared. No second goal as of yet. Take. Plenty of pressure. That's what you've got to do against the sign with the man down. Conte. Andreas Muller back to Obermeyer. Andreas Muller across the wing. Conde. Wonderful ball through. Beautiful finish. Tremendous for the 2 0 lead. Tobias Muller, the captain, makes the run from the back, finds his way all the way up in one on one territory. His first goal of the season. All smiles as this club is looking well on its way to another victory, another three points in the bag. I don't say never, I guess. Onside. Quadro beaten very soundly, loses his footing as well. Head up for just a moment, wonderfully placed. It doesn't get much better than that. Could see a few goals tonight, perhaps. That's the third league favorites. All look to put their stamp on this game. At one point, do you calm it down? But we're playing for for more than just survival. Every goal is important. And more than anything, form is important. And there really is no apparent challenger for them at the moment in this third division and can't stress it enough nine points clear of FCK but there is still opportunities to make amends Never say never after all. Wonderful shot, but just a shade wide. Corner it is. 
Deflection crucial, it seems. Bulatus with a... A shot that came from nothing, it seemed like. May have gotten on target without that deflection. We'll never know. But the corner could tell us about some potential fates here. Yeboah to deliver. Wadu's well, got a piece of it, but not in the right direction. And now Obermeyer. The opposite wing from where he usually plants himself. Five minutes have transpired. Will we see a third before the halftime whistle? To be fair, it could come from either side. Duisburg, although behind both in the number of players on the pitch and in the score. I've had a few moments where things could have maybe should have been a little bit different. But Magdeburg doing the right thing here. No need to run straight at your opponent when you can pass it around, make them chase you a little bit, use all that open space now. It's been changed from more midfield oriented formation for Duisburg to what looks like a 4-2-2 now. A 4-3-2 rather. Attic on the wing. All the way across he finds Ito. Ito with the opener today. His first goal in a Magdeburg jersey. Will he manage to get his third, or his second rather, and his uh, side's third? Remains to be seen. Obermeyer. Poor ball, and Ito's got it. to make the follow-up run there with one of the two on the wing. But nobody on the same page as Attic there. Conde. Obermeyer with some space. Forcing Yeboah to it runs from side to side. It's Ito. Hola. Burga. Dangerous pass there. Managed to get it away. Yes, Mola, the captain. The wing to Attic through the middle now. Conde. Obermeyer. Ito. Sides now. Oh, Ito may have taken that away from Conte. Back to Ito, though, in the penalty area. Brought down. And play on. Look close. He's not arguing it too much. Mm. 
Well played. Nothing so far has tested the replacement keeper after Weinkauf got. Toster being the last man back on a goal saving tackle, but at what cost? Well, a red card for him. This side down a man. Conceded one prior and one after. Battle in close, but Duisburg managed to escape with it for now, that is. Back in their end, and Keeper will get himself a little settling touch. So far he's just kicked it from the spot. Tough hill to climb for the home side here. But they're going to need to dig deep and find some sort of way to get at least one goal on the board. One you start to believe. Might be one thing if this was even on the numbers, but... League leaders aren't going to make this easy if it was a full 11, let alone when you're down to 10. So much space generated and that shot will go well wide, but I guess there was an opportunity. Feel for Weinkauf though, in that situation he was in, still can't get over that. And he was placed where if he came out to play it, as he did, he would have to make a great first touch. He didn't, ended up costing him the red. And if he didn't go out, well then <laughs> Conte is all alone in a one-on-one -on -one and you Take your chances, I guess, with that. He made up his mind and... Another meter or so, and it might have gotten closer to the box, and he could have gotten a fist on it, perhaps, but... That's just the way things fall sometimes. They're looking to finish out this half with some fight in them, but Ito is going to get the first move the other way. Wonderful tackle. Stoyer saving a run on the opposite wing. Gives Boadus a chance here to play something in the box. He does, but Andreas Muller is there to pick it off. And Overmeyer too find him right back to midfield we go strong challenge Muller does well to recover defensively Conde Artic Obermeyer sees some space. The pass was not quite 
fancy enough to make something happen. That'll be a yellow, unnecessary one at that. Not quite sure why Obermeyer brought him down that way. Had plenty of defensive support, two goals up. Yes, you'll have to be a little careful in this one. Rode him to the ground there. Second card of the season for him, second yellow that is. Conde. Atik. Wonderful ball in from Atik, but just a hair off in the terms of the timing. Kampitsky. Almost got himself there. Boatu's going in a bit aggressively. He smiles it off, but Boatu taking the brunt of that one as we're into it should be about two or three minutes of added time here. Turned his body, came in with some flight. minutes to be added on and yeah Jok opens uh, coming in as the replacement keeper and to get his equipment on again not a position that you're really expecting to need to be replaced in the middle of a game of course it does happen and so far he hasn't really faced any any tests other than the goal of course see if Magdeburg decide to go for one more offensive push here oh, that was dangerous Bordeaux was lurking almost picked that one away Andreas Muller Atik Ito making a run on the far side. Berbel. Offside was Atik. Not too happy about that, but didn't keep the lines in mind. Slipped on the ball. Conde tried to poke it for Obermeyer, but ball's going to be brought back. Advantage was played momentarily. Obermeyer. Been very involved in this opening half. To be fair, everybody has. They've enjoyed possession. Lions share of it at this point. Long ball in. Obamaya's there. That was nicely for him. Drilled in towards the middle. Follow up volley. Beautiful goal. 3 0 for Magdeburg. Krempicki with the finishing touches of this first half, his fifth of the season. What a ball to find Obermeyer. 
wasn't quite intended by Attic, but he'll take it. That's an assist in his pocket. He would have loved to have get that one down for himself, I'm sure. And that is a dominating first half. As we'll wrap this one up. 3-0 through 49 minutes. And it's going to be a very, very large hill for Duisburg to climb in the second half. They might have it in them, but it's going to start with an early goal, if anything. On the other side of things, Magdeburg, they could run away with this one. Stick around, and we'll find out in the second half. Welcome back, folks. Second half will begin in just a moment. After everyone has reset themselves. Got off to a bit of a quick start there. Changes for both sides. After a explosive first half in which three goals were scored. Ito, Kimpiki, and Tobias Muller with the three goals in the first half. Ito started off. Muller got himself his first of the season, as did Ito. And Kimpiki seemingly finished this game off with his fifth of the campaign. Will we see more? That's the question. I see no reason why not. This isn't the kind of squad to sit back and be satisfied with their first half success. That's how you let teams back into the game. Not giving that game plan effort throughout the entire 90. Since he can be a thing, of course, as we get ourselves the first stoppage in the second half. From open play, that is. Decent enough situation to let this one fly towards the cage. Let's try and loft it in, find a few heads. Look appealing. Lining up for the ball into the box here. For the visitors. Just break the home side. Their keeper was shown a red card in the first half. I take with the delivery. Plenty of men back to defend and clear. with all the time and space in the world to pick out the passes they want. The question at this point is more of what do you do if you're Duisburg? Oh, stuff like this. Timely interception. Yebua on the left takes a deflection and goes wide left. Corner upcoming though. Make the most out of the opportunities that you can. A dangerous pass. Leads to a scoring opportunity. And Ibra will try and deliver. So someone friendly in the box. Get this down to a two goal deficit. Falls nicely but 
Now they're in transition. Beautiful from Artic. 11th goal of the season for him. Third against the replacement keeper. Looked like he got a fair bit of that on the mitt as well. But so much power behind that. No way that Couples was going to keep that one out. And poor Coppens, to be fair. Not much he can do there. Defender was caught completely. That was Stoya on the back line. Who let Atik get enough space and find an opportunity to give it the lethal touch it needed. And he did just that. And there's four. Seems like five is all but a formality at this point. And that's the sportsman's question, isn't it? What do you do in a scenario like this? You keep going? Because on the other side of things, letting up will seem like you're Potentially disrespecting your opponent, saying, well, we don't really need to do anything. But at the same time, putting up more and more goals. I was also in that same train of thought. Ibo tried to get things going. Great ball in the box, and that one is right at Raiman. That's his first real bit of action he's got to see. Few and far between for him. Conte and Cheka were substituted at halftime, and why not when you're up so much? Ito got himself his first goal. Cheka takes his place. Then Piki also got himself a goal. Yeah, Kubiak steps in for him, and although Conte didn't quite factor in in the score sheet side of things, he was very instrumental in a lot of the build-up. See if Brunker can fill his spot. This side has quality down the line. Looks like we'll get ourselves another little substitution here. Looks like Conde will be coming off. Malachowski will take his spot. Twenty-three-year-old Polish Adrian Malachowski, his fourteenth appearance, still looking for his first goal. If there is a night where you can get uh, perhaps an easier one than on another, it'll be here. Advantage played. Second one will definitely not earn the same, and Boadu's getting a bit aggressive on the challenge there. Be a bit fortunate that he isn't shown a yellow. And Boatus had a few moments in the first half. There was one opportunity that was deflected away. There could have been a moment for this scoreline to reflect a different reality. 
But that seems to be long gone at this point. Three goals, you could say maybe. But four seems like an insurmountable lead at this point, given the flow of play. Yeboa. Yeboa, all on his lonesome, brought down. And a solid spot to take a free kick from. Could definitely go for net here. But you see, even so, such a quick offensive sequence. There's still plenty more Magdeburg players back. They'll give it a shot towards net here. Boadus looks like he'll step up and give it a chance, and he goes well, well over. And a look at the Arctic goal from not too long ago. Classy goal. And Attic has been the class of the third league so far. few players with 11 goals now. I take among them. And the fact that he's got 11 assists as well. Pretty darn good. Actually it might be or so before the night is up. Searching for Antic here on the near side. Hola. Andreas Muller, that is. Set it at the top of the top of the match, but just the spot that where that these two teams have come from again, both being relegated from the second division a couple of years ago. Now at opposite ends of the table in the third league, top spot for Magdeburg and Duisburg have sunk into the bottom three, giving up a further three points here tonight. Unless a miracle happens, and as much as I'd love to see it, purely from a neutral standpoint, it seems rather unlikely. And with this victory, presumably, Magdeburg will be the first side in 
this season's third division of the Bundesliga to make it past 50 points. And with results going the way they are so far this this evening. Uh, possession of the second spot with 40 points. So still nine points clear of the next side. Still 30 plus minutes to go here. Plenty of time for us to see a couple more in the back of the net. Well, how hungry they'll be for it remains to be seen. Mola, this pass is blocked by a teammate nonetheless. Bit unfortunate. Like a decent build up. There was some space to be had. Solid ball through and picked out cleanly, but the desire is there for more on the board. As Raymond gets to play essentially a bit of makeshift mid midfielding here. Poor turnover. Follow-up ball didn't have the quality on it to really flutter the back line, but those are the kinds of opportunities that you want to limit. Stoya. Or Burger, rather. Solid challenges along the far side of the pitch and Magdeburg emerge. In stride, plenty of numbers forward. What is the play here? Long shot right at the keeper. And Coppens gets himself his first save. Something positive to take away from this one for him. Being placed in a terrible position. Solid shot, solid build up. Miami coming on for Yebo. Boss had himself, uh, well, as well of a game as he could without scoring in this particular scenario.
Kaplan's did well. Could have been a dangerous moment there. The side have an opportunity to counterattack, but that's come to a halt. As Muller does well to clear, but not all the way. In the end, though, free kick. Attacks. Another chance for us to find a fifth goal here. Need a good clearance. That wasn't it. Deborg pressuring for five. Andreas Muller. from Duisburg. See if the visitors decide to open up the wide areas. So far they look rather content with going through the heart of the defense though. Now they spread it out wide. Using the numbers advantage. Retaining possession here. Can't find the space to turn and shoot. Finally does, and Kopens gets a fist to it. Boadouz tries to go through a couple. Doesn't make it. Christian Tits, the trainer, manager, whatever term you want to use. He'll be very pleased with his team's result today. Can be assured they'll want to keep a clean sheet in this one. Plenty of space on the wing here. Bell Bell brought down. Going to see a card here. Yellow for Felcher. supporters aren't completely sold on it but that's the way it is as I think will be substituted by the looks of it what a goal to put it at four Kept in. Still alive. Chance for a header, but it's cleared away off the chest. Yeah. 
From distance they approach. Obermeyer lofted in. Rather nicely at that. Number five is denied. Offsides and a couple of saves made. Regardless, excellent stuff there from Coppins, but Felcher brought down. Not sure what happened if he got a knock there on the shot. Maybe when he landed there. Hope he's all right after all of this is said and done. Maybe can't kick there on the build up. Get up on his own power and make his way to the sidelines for now. See if manager Schmidt keeps him in. He seems to be no worse for wear. 20 minutes remain, at least in the allotted 90. Himself a touch after getting back on the field of play, so all seems to be fine. season to be Christian Titz. His side are in complete command of their Bundesliga hopes for the advancement back towards the second division. He's been here since February of last year. Prior to that, he was with Rotweiss Essen. Fifty year old will more than likely see the side to the top of the table. Chance for them to get back to where they feel they belong. attack they decide to spring forward this time it's caught up among the defense and Coppens is forced to clear that one poor touch there from Bordeaux Bell to toss it in may have gotten himself a little bit of space to make something happen there
happens. We'll clear that one. It's a little dangerous for a moment there. Solid sliding challenge to free up the ball again. Quick recap of the scoring for those that may have missed it. Ito started us off in the ninth minute. Obermeyer provided the assist for it. Tobias Muller made it two in the 32nd minute. The other Muller, Andreas, provided the assist there. And then Krempicki in the fourth minute of added time in the first half with Atik providing the assist. And then Atik himself for the fourth, five minutes after the restart. And Tobias Mula getting himself an assist for that one. to get something back in the pride department is still on the table for Duisburg it's going to be challenging there's no doubt about it can Magdeburg make it five for a truly resounding and commanding victory in this one as Coppens gets a bit of a collision there and Brunka taking the brunt of that one. Plenty of ball movement. Plenty of build up. Struggled to have the same sort of consistency in de generating dangerous chances since all those substitutions, but that's to be expected as that shot goes well up and over. And no trouble for Copens this time. Here's Hagen Schmidt. is Hagen Schmidt's first go around as a manager. Only experience is with MSV Duisburg. And it hasn't been the greatest start for him in that role. As his side again, they're at the bottom three of the table at the moment. I can't overstate it that this is the Each side of, of one coin. Well, they were both demoted from the, th the uh, second division a couple of years ago and now one at the top, one staring another bout with relegation in the mouth. Could they get one back here? Nope. Not sure if that slipped off the boot or he just had trouble locating it, but Hetveer had an opportunity to send that one in. Defender got in the way enough to deflect it. So some hope from the corner. Plenty of men coming forward. Six in the box. Rose can't deliver it nicely. His opposite number getting in the way.
Felcher to deliver it in. Get it away cleanly and clearly. Keeper out to get this one. Fortunately, no crazy, crazy scenario like the red card from the first half. Now a chance for the counter to put the final nail in the coffin. Coppens is there, makes the decision quickly to challenge it. Final 10. Perhaps a chance to see something wonderful one last time. Left wing attack this time. No clean setup. That one's going well over and away from the cage. Looking to drag it back and fire from distance now. Seems to be the theme of the latter stages of the second half. <laughs> well, looking ahead, Duisburg will play SV Wien Wiesbaden on Saturday for their 24th match day. And currently, Wien Wiesbaden sit in ninth place. It's a mid table battle for them. A chance to perhaps gain a point back after this disappointment. Magdeburg on the other side of things will play FC Saarbrücken on Saturday for their 24th match. And that should be a telling tale of how the rest of the season will unfold as currently Sabrokin are sitting at 40 points, barring no changes in the results, as they're leading two to nothing. So it'll be one against two next week. And barring any Kaiserslautern change in points, which given their history should be a win or a draw. So that'll be an opportunity for Magdeburg to really put themselves in a mentally commanding position. Beecher closest opponent says getting a fist on that one was the keeper. Doesn't need to make a second save. Heck, I'm not sure if that first one would count as a save. More like a bit of a lob in towards the box. Either way, crisis is averted. Magdeburg will move up and look to make amends. Go back towards the middle. Wonderful flick in. The substitute Brunker makes his mark on the game. And it seems that every goal just seems to get classier and classier as this one goes on.
spectacular finish. Obermeyer has had himself a heck of a game alongside on that right wing. Calm, cool delivery. Not a result I expected when I sat down and put the headphones on. But that red card changed everything in terms of the ultimate result. I still have to feel as if Magdeburg would have put up two goals. But being treated to the finishes we've had tonight has been a sight to behold. Anytime you can see five goals, it's a sight to behold. And we've still got a few minutes here as that one is headed in and just a little bit wide. Kvarteng was there. He actually made a decent enough connection. Forced Coppens to really run for the hills. And poor Coppens has had to dig the ball out of his net four times. The first one went against Weinkauf, who got the straight red. Definitely get a free kick here. Let's go as uh, Ayani rather getting a bit too aggressive. Play it quickly. Had a run there. Couldn't find the pass. Not enough space, it seems. And that was Andreas Muller, 16 for Magdeburg, who appeared to have about a body length to the nearest defender. Final few minutes of this resounding victory. Mola. As if they want to go for six, and why not? When you've got the opportunity to rack them up, you've got to go for it. Offside, but a very close one. Bunker in the area looking for number two. Just mistimed the run a little bit. Not by much, though, as you'll see. A step later, they might not have reached the ball, but would have been onside at least. Just to make the lofted pass, couldn't connect it. Final moments. See if they stress for six here. Make it their biggest margin of victory. Even against the depleted side, six goals is no simple task. Bordeaux breaking through. The one on two, decides to take a shot and that one's blocked rather easily. Second attempt also. A wonderful stuff from the defender, Berga, who despite being five goals up, says you're not going to get even a chance to spoil our keepers. Clean a night of 
Well, hasn't had much action, but what he has had, he's dealt with. Don't expect to see more than two minutes or so of time to be added on. It's been rather a clean half. And there we go. Right on the 90. There's not much point in playing anymore. A five-goal explosion for the visitors who continue their tear at the top of the third division of the German Bundesliga. Another three points in the bag. They sit with 51, the first team to reach that plateau. 11 clear at the moment of second spot. No slouches in this one as they put forward everything on the table. They earn the victory in resounding fashion. A night to remember, perhaps, and one to forget. Coppens came in after the red card to the keeper, did what he could, but four goals against is not an easy pill to swallow for any goalkeeper, let alone one that's put into this situation. His side had a few moments, perhaps, here and there scattered to get something back in the, in the scoring department, maybe one, but the defenders stood tall. They had the numbers advantage for well, about 70 minutes of this game. And in the end, that would be the deciding factor along with the quality that Magdeburg have. They are the leaders of the third German Bundesliga. And it looks like they will be the representatives to move on from it. But time will tell. Still plenty of football down the line to be played. But for now, a wonderful evening to you all and catch you next time.